Happy 2022, everyone. I've recently been hearing from an overwhelming number of engineering students, myself included, asking questions like, is it better to major in mechanical or chemical engineering? Or what's the difference between industrial and manufacturing engineering? And honestly, we have a legit reason to be confused. Let's say we could travel back 200 years into the past. I could probably count all of the different types of engineering with just one hand. But with the passage of time comes new technologies and problems. And as a result, there's like a bajillion types of engineering out there today, including mechanical, civil, chemical, software, industrial, aerospace, petroleum, etc. So as someone who got his bachelor's and master's degree in engineering and someone who has worked as a mechanical engineer in industry for several years now, I've gotten the opportunity to interact with all different kinds of engineers and engineering programs out there. So I'll attempt to explain all 22 types of engineering in this video. Universities and companies like to give us the impression that there's so many different types of engineering out there with their fancy programs and job titles. But in the end, it all boils down to only six, which I like to call the big six. Mechanical, chemical, Chemical, civil, electrical, software, and industrial. All the other types of engineering that you've heard is either a combination of two or more of these disciplines or a smaller subsection of one of them. First, I'll walk through each of the six categories. I'll talk about what it actually is, the courses you can expect to take, and what kind of jobs you can expect to get with the degree after graduation. Afterwards, I'll clarify how all the other types of engineering relate to the big six. Let's start off with mechanical engineering. Mechanical engineers design, build, analyze, and optimize products in virtually every industry, including but not limited to automotive, aerospace, medical, electronics, and defense. Take this laptop for instance. A group of mechanical engineers probably spent at least a year designing the chassis and selecting the right material for the optimal heat dissipation, weight, strength, and durability, as well as analyzing the mechanical stresses within the overall assembly before it was finally produced and sold. Some courses you will take include statics, dynamics, fluid mechanics, thermodynamics, mechanics and materials, mechanical design, manufacturing processes, and a common programming language such as MATLAB. Some positions that you can apply for with a mechanical engineering degree include product design engineer, whose role is to, for example, design the housing of an iPhone to make sure that it's manufacturable using computer-aided design tools and to conduct failure analysis to make sure that it doesn't break when dropped onto a hard surface. Second, we have aerodynamics engineer whose function is to design and analyze the aerodynamic and thermodynamic performance of airplanes to improve fuel efficiency or even reduce manufacturing costs. Third, we have a manufacturing engineer who is a subject matter expert at various manufacturing processes and equipment, say for a Tesla Model 3, and how to efficiently and cost effectively produce 250,000 vehicles in three months. Next on the list is chemical engineering. Chemical engineers will work in a lab, but most likely a production plant, to design the plant itself or the chemical processes used to make materials such as fertilizers and drugs. They can work for many industries, including the petroleum industry for places like ExxonMobil and Shell, to accelerate the destruction of planet Earth, as well as the food industry for places like Coca-Cola and Tyson. Chemical engineers have to take a lot of chemistry courses, including organic, inorganic, and biochemistry, as well as thermodynamics, separation processes, chemical kinetics, and reactor design. Some positions that you can apply for with a mechanical engineering degree include process and chemical engineer who develops and optimizes processes that uses energy to convert raw materials into usable products, such as producing synthetic rubbers using petroleum, hydrocarbons, and coal. Another position could be solid state cell chemistry engineer who designs scalable fabrication methods and participates in the sizing process for electric vehicle batteries. Next is electrical engineering. Electrical engineers design all the electronics hardware such as the wiring, circuitry, and communications technology, and basically anything that uses electricity such as an iPhone, a stepper motor, or engine control unit of a car. Some of the courses you'll have to take if you decide to study electrical engineering include electromagnetic systems, circuits, entry to electronics and lawyer design, as well as signals and systems. Now there's a huge selection of jobs you can expect to get with the electrical engineering degree after graduation. First is hardware engineer, where you design, test, and debug electrical components and circuits for production that go into any electrical device. Second is PCB designer, where you design PCBs and study PCB design trends, as well as manufacturing processes, and evaluate things like cost, packaging, manufacturing, and system performance. 
Third is embedded software or firmware engineer, where you get to essentially write code and algorithms that tell a device how to behave. So you get to work with both software and hardware. Next, let's talk about software engineering. Software engineers design, test, and evaluate software for computers and mobile devices, such as Android and iOS apps, operating systems, and even web pages using various program languages such as C, C++, Go, Java, and Python. Classes you can expect to take include programming with languages such as C and object-oriented programming starting with C++ and its daughter languages. You should also expect to take algorithms, software design, advanced data structures, and intro to operating systems. Some of the jobs you can expect to get include obviously a software engineer where you develop software for operating systems, apps, games, and APIs. Second is web developer, which includes front and back end developers. As a front end developer, you'll create and maintain all of the code that controls the visual elements of a website. And as a back end developer, you'll focus more on the server side of the website or the side that users can't see. A civil engineer designs and manages large scale projects in the public sector, including roads, bridges, dams, buildings, airports, and railways. As a civil engineering major, you can expect to take statics and dynamics, fluid mechanics, mechanics and materials, solid mechanics, structural design, and the design and mechanics of concrete structures. The positions you can expect to get with a civil engineering degree include obviously a civil engineer, where you oversee large-scale infrastructure projects from design all the way to construction. Second is structural engineer, where you will use math and physics to determine the safest and most functional way to design a bridge or building and what materials will make the structure robust for an indefinite period of time. Third is water resources engineer, where you will create infrastructure used to channel clean drinking water to cities and homes and create underground wells for water collection. Industrial engineers design and optimize processes, systems, and organizations holistically, including people, money, knowledge, flow of information, and equipment. And they can work in hospitals, manufacturing plants, banks, consulting firms, etc. Courses you can expect to take as an industrial engineering major include operations modeling, ergonomics, optimal methods, Markov processes, data processing, and discrete event simulation. With the industrial engineering degree, you can expect to get a lot of different positions. First is industrial engineer, where you develop a lot of strategies to improve, say, a production line and to reduce waste to achieve max efficiency using Six Sigma, Kanban, lean manufacturing, and other tools. Second is process improvement engineer, where you might find ways to shorten queue times at a bank and find ways to improve the customer experience. And third is supply chain analyst, where you take data and reports from each stage of the supply chain to minimize transportation time and cost from point A to point B. Now that you have a better sense of what the six overarching categories of engineering are, you're probably still wondering about the other five gazillion types of engineering out there. So let's state your curiosity and talk about them. Let's start off with mechatronics engineering. The name itself is literally mechanical plus electrical. And for that reason, it's a combination of mechanical, electrical, and software engineering. And you can get a position related to any of these three disciplines. It opens up the door to many new opportunities and it allows you to work on things like robotics, prosthetic limbs, and autonomous vehicles. Then there's computer engineering, which is a mix between software and electrical engineering. So if you're undecided between the two and you know that mechanical engineering is not for you, then this is probably a good option for you to consider. Next, we have systems engineering, which is traditionally building, analyzing, and managing any system, be it electrical, mechanical, chemical, biological, or one involving business processes and logistics. Technically speaking, both mechatronics and computer engineering are both subsets of system engineering because they combine two or more types of engineering to build a system with multiple interacting components. So the opportunities are endless in terms of what you get to work on, but many of the systems engineering jobs today are a mix of computer and mechatronics engineering based on what I've seen. Some examples include building models for communication, computer, and sensor networks, or developing quantitative stock selection models that are used to pick high-performing stocks for clients. As an environmental engineer, you will come up with solutions to manage wastewater, alleviate pollution, and solve issues related to recycling and waste disposal. Now let's talk aerospace and automotive engineering. These are very interesting because both automotive and aerospace engineers are either mechanical, electrical, or software engineers that work on different areas of airplanes and cars respectively. 
For example, you could design the body and white of a car as a mechanical engineer or design the circuitry that allows the gasoline engine to charge the battery or the circuitry that allows the battery to distribute electricity to the electric motors in the electric vehicle as an electrical engineer or develop the software of the autopilot system that controls how an autonomous vehicle makes driving decisions. The same goes for biomedical engineering. You can become a biomedical engineer with a mechanical, electrical, or software engineering degree without getting a specific biomedical engineering degree depending on the area you're working in. For example, you could design the external housing of a pacemaker that protects the batteries and electrical components as a mechanical engineer, or you can work on a circuitry that contains the leads and pulse generator as an electrical engineer, or you can program the logic that drives the device as a software engineer. However, if you want to get into areas like genetic and tissue engineering, getting a biomedical engineering degree is probably a smart move to make. Petroleum engineers work in the oil and gas industry to design methods of extracting crude oil and natural gas from below the Earth's surface and finding ways of converting them to gasoline, jet fuel, and other types of fuels. You don't necessarily need a petroleum engineering degree to become a petroleum engineer, and you can still work in the industry with a mechanical, chemical, or electrical engineering degree if you're interested in surface operations like transporting or converting crude oil to gasoline. However, if you're more interested in subsurface operations like exploration, drilling, and reservoir management, a petroleum engineering degree is definitely required. Architectural engineering is a subset of civil engineering and deals with planning, designing, and constructing specifically buildings. Generally, a civil engineer oversees the overall project of several structures, whereas an architectural engineer will focus on the design and construction of a single building. 99.9% .9 of the time, I always recommend sticking with civil engineering, which is definitely more popular and gives you way more flexibility in terms of the projects you can work on. Nuclear engineering falls under chemical engineering, and as a nuclear engineer, you would design reactors, power plants, weapons, and instruments, leveraging nuclear fission and fusion. You would generally need a master's or PhD degree in nuclear science or engineering to work in this specialized area. Construction engineering is a specialty of civil engineering, and like civil engineers, construction engineers work on bridges, buildings, and roads. Civil engineers generally focus more on the design aspect of infrastructure, while construction engineers focus more on the on-site management and implementation of the plans done by the civil engineer. Agricultural engineers design and improve power supplies, farming machinery, facilities, structures, and solutions to solve agricultural problems. For example, you might modify environmental factors affecting crop or animal production, such as airflow in a barn or runoff patterns on a field. You can become an agricultural engineer by getting a biological or agricultural engineering degree, but that isn't necessary, and you can still work in the industry with a mechanical, electrical, software, or chemical engineering degree. For example, a software engineer might develop software that integrates AI to improve the efficiency of fertilizer application. Next, as a marine engineer, you will design and engineer boats, ships, submarines, and offshore structures using either your mechanical, software, or electrical engineering knowledge. For example, a software engineer might develop and install software for mission critical systems, while a mechanical engineer would analyze the stresses and the hydrodynamic performance of the submarine's propeller. Moving on to materials engineering. This one is interesting because it doesn't fit into any of the six categories of engineering. Although mechanical and chemical engineering majors take material science, it doesn't fall into either of the two types of engineering. Beginning in the 1940s, materials engineering became widely recognized as a distinct field of science and engineering, and many universities began creating dedicated schools just for its study. With that being said, you can still without question work in this niche field with a mechanical or chemical engineering degree to develop new materials such as piezoelectrics and shape memory alloys. The second to last type of engineering we'll talk about is Manufacturing engineering, which is a subset of industrial engineering that combines some elements of mechanical and chemical engineering to add value to raw materials by turning them into saleable goods and products using computers and Lean Six Sigma tools such as value stream mapping. You can become a manufacturing engineer with either a mechanical or industrial engineering degree. 
Last but not least is financial engineering. Yes, believe it or not, this is a thing and many universities like Columbia and Princeton offer a degree in financial engineering. This one is an odd duck because it doesn't fit into any of the six categories of engineering. However, it does leverage software engineering knowledge such as programming and financial theory and math to develop new investment tools, trading strategies, and financial models. But I'm gonna be brutally honest, Financial engineers aren't actual engineers and they're essentially just quantitative analysts or applied mathematicians. But that's it. This is every type of engineering out there explained. And if you're currently deciding on which engineering program to get into or thinking about becoming one of these types of engineers, I hope you found this video helpful. Thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to smash the subscribe and hit the bell icon for more videos like this. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.